Okay, part of the problem with doing some of these reviews sometimes is that you start to have trouble. I, I don't know why that was blue. Is uh, <laughs> you start to have some trouble uh, trying to narrow down the time. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is a review for an entire chapter, so the fact that I can do something in about an hour is actually pretty mesmerizing. Um, I don't know if that's always going to happen. In this case, there are a lot of practice problems, a lot of things involving calculator work, so it's not going to be very quick. Uh, I'll get through this stuff kind of quickly. I'll type it out. You can pause as you go, as to, like when it comes to defining terms and such. So I'm going to start defining things for you, like polygon. Uh, a polygon is an enclosed shape that has sides and angles. Now, the number of sides is the same as the number of angles. You might want to shorthand that in some way. I know that I could do that in some different ways as I write that. So, like, you know, a square or a quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. And it's enclosed. There's no opening in it. Uh, a regular polygon is a polygon. It's any polygon with all sides and angles, or with all sides congruent and all angles congruent. Okay. So I, I, I mean, I kind of think that you know those ones, but I need to make sure that you uh, know what they mean for when I go into my other definitions because they're going to be important for those. Okay, and interior angles are kind of like the angles I just mentioned above with number of angles and such, but they're the angles that we normally think of when we think of angles. They're the normal angles. They're the ones, the angles on the inside of a polygon. So, uh, for instance, and I'm going to be moving down to it quite a bit here. Um, look at this regular hexagon that you have down here. And an interior angle, for example, would be, quite simply, like this guy. This is an interior angle angle. So is this and that and that and everything else. But here's just one example of one. Um, all polygons are made up of triangles and I'm going to explain that first part a little bit before I keep going. Now we've talked about this again extensively um, but that's the whole point of this making this extensive. A triangle is obviously made up of triangle because the triangle is a triangle. So there's a triangle right here. Okay. If I add another triangle to this, I will have made a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape. If you observe just the outside, two triangles makes a quadrilateral. If I add a third triangle to this right here, I will have made a five-sided shape. Count them up. One, two, three, four, five. That's a pentagon. If I added yet another triangle to this, I've made a six-sided shape. Again, count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you might be asking, well, how are the different ways you can add the triangles? When are you going to run out of space, etc.? Normally, if there's a regular one drawn, I can show you exactly what I mean, and that's what I'm going to do. Here's an example of a six-sided shape, and here is an example of a six-sided shape. I'm going to draw those triangles again, and I want you to pay close attention to what I do, and I'm going to explain it. But I'm going to draw triangles. There's one triangle, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. And you might have noticed I drew it from the same place each time. The reason behind that is because I'm going to talk more about interior angles and interior angle sums. Notice the next thing I'm going to talk about is interior angle sum. These are my interior angles. Here's an interior angle. Here's an interior angle. Here's an interior angle. Here's an interior angle, here's an interior angle, and here's an interior angle. Now notice, when I drew my triangles, I wanted to make sure that the angles of my triangles only hit interior angles of my polygon. Right? I didn't want to start from the center here, start drawing out triangles, and then I'm getting interior angles here and here, etc., and they don't hit anything. Because I want to get a relationship among the sum of the interior angles of one triangle, like this triangle right here, has an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. Just like every triangle. This triangle right here, 180 degrees. 180 and 180. Now I know that because the triangle's angles are a part of the interior angles of this hexagon, that the interior angle sum of the hexagon is the sum of the measure of the interior angles of my triangles. I know that was a mouthful, but basically, 
the interior angle sum of a regular hexagon is 180 plus 180 plus 180 plus 180, or 180 times 4, which is 720. Now I, know, now I know I'm jumping all over the place. In fact, I didn't even finish my sentence before, but I wanted to make sure that you got what I was doing and was talking about the triangles. Any polygons made up of triangles. I did this one with it. I can do a, I can do a dodecagon with it. You just have to draw them from one place to the next. Create those triangles. Know they all add up to 180, and know that together that adds up to something completely different. Okay, so moving back up, let's read this sentence again. All polygons are made up of triangles, check, whose interior angle sum is equal to the sum of the, I'm going to put number of triangles in the polygon, but it goes a little deeper than that because obviously I'm not saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 triangles. You're also going to say that triangles have 180 degree interior angle measures or sums. So, again, the sentence might not make sense if I say all polygons are made up of triangles whose interior angle sum is equal to the sum of the number of triangles in the polygon. Kind of weird. Let's do some examples, rummage through it. You're going to make some more sense out of it. Okay, a three-sided polygon, a triangle, has one triangle. It's, uh, you know, according to the way we're doing it, we're trying to keep them at the interior angles. Obviously, I could draw a triangle like this and say, no, look, I made three triangles out of this. No, no, I want to keep the interior angles intact. Uh, its interior angle sum is this. I'm going to take 180 and multiply by the number of triangles there are in that polygon. In this case, the interior angle sum of a three-sided polygon, such as a triangle, is 180 degrees. Now, we already knew that. A four-sided polygon is made up of two triangles. Okay? Remember here before, a four-sided polygon would have just been these two right here, quadrilateral. The, in, its interior angle sum is 180 times the number of triangles. Because I'm taking each triangle there is, like this 180 times 2, 180 plus 180. That's where I'm getting that from, equals 360. And what that gives me, once again, in case you didn't see it before, is it gives me that interior angle plus that, plus that, plus that. Because this is 180 from those three, and this is 180 from those three, that together is 180 plus 180. A five-sided polygon has three triangles. One more. I'm only going to flash this one more time here. This would be including these guys right here. So here's my five-sided polygon, just like that. And this is 180 plus 180 plus 180. Or 180 times 3, 180 times the number of triangles, and I get 540 degrees. And you'll see, again, I want to save you time here. I want to keep going down. We just did the hexagon one. That was 720. Same thing the whole way through, right? I don't want to waste your time with it. Uh, so this is 5, 6, 7, 8. Now be careful. I go from 10-sided polygon to 12-sided polygon. Take a guess at what I'm going to do here. 12-sided polygon will have 10 triangles, two more than that. Okay. Um, and let me just explain things as I'm going along here. Um, what you'll end up seeing here is there's a special relationship among the number of sides in the triangles or in the polygons and the number of triangles in the polygons as well. And the relationship is that you'll see three-sided polygon has one triangle, four-sided has two, five, three, six, four, seven, five, eight, six, nine, seven, ten, etc. You can see how many more sides are there in a polygon than triangles. Or better yet, how many less triangles are there than sides? And that's the question of the day here, because there's an equation that you can draw from this. If this always stays consistent, starting with a three-sided polygon, because it can't be less than three. Oh, by the way, a polygon needs to uh, three, let's see, a regular polygon, it needs three or more sides and angles. Should have mentioned that, can't have a two-sided polygon. Um, but here's the equation. D, which is the sum, the number that you want, equals. Notice what we did each time. We did 180 times what? The number of triangles in the polygon. Now, the number of triangles is the number of sides minus 2. 
So if I take n, call that the number of sides, subtract 2 from it, then I'm going to give myself the number of triangles. So this whole part right here is number of triangles. If I multiply 180, the, the measure of each triangle sum, by the number of triangles, I'm going to get the interior angle sum of the entire polygon. doesn't matter how many sides there are, you just have to make sure you indicate that there. Now here's a footnote. In a regular polygon, you can find the measure of just one interior angle by dividing the number of sides or angles in the polygon. And again, if that's kind of like, well, what the heck did you just say? Let's rephrase that using this right here, deleting everything else that I had. And that. In a regular polygon, such as this regular hexagon, and remember, that means all sides and angles congruent. I have all sides angles congruent right here. Um, if I know the interior angle sum of the hexagon, now remember, Every regular or every hexagon has an interior angle sum of 720 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's regular or not, because whatever's lost in a smaller angle in a hexagon would be made up in a bigger angle. So they all add up to 720 because they all have four triangles in it, right? So interior angle sum is 720. If I wanted to find the measure of one interior angle like this guy right here, because it's a regular hexagon and all these angles are congruent. All I have to do is say, well, these are all kind of x. x plus x plus x plus x plus x plus x equals 720. So 6x is 720. x is 720 over 6. You take your interior angle sum and you divide it by 6, the number of angles that there are, which is 120 degrees. So the measure of each interior angle of a regular hexagon is 120 degrees. So this is also 120, this is 120, etc. They're all 120. That is a regular hexagon. In a regular pentagon, it would be different. right? A regular pentagon's interior angle sum adds up to 900. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that was a uh, five-sided shape. Pentagon adds up to 540. Now you've got to take 540 and divide by 5 the number of angles in a pentagon and you're going to get a different number. You'd get 108 degrees. Okay. So that was a footnote. It's, it's, it's in small writing, but it's not a minor thing. It's a major thing. So it's like taking this, it's like taking your D, 180 times n over 2, and dividing it by n, the number of sides. 720 divided by 6, right? 540 divided by 5. That's what that interior angle measure would be. Okay, exterior angles, they're different from interior angles in that they are um, they're kind of awkward. What you do is I want you to uh, extend the side of a polygon. You know, it's, it's the angle, oh, here, how about this? It's the angle made by extending the side of a polygon. Now, there's a little more to it that I want to put in here that I want to fit. Exterior angles are supplementary. Oh, well, that was a little small. Exterior angles are supplementary to their interior angles. So here's what all that means. Uh, exterior angle, let's take the side, and I want to extend it outward. Oops, like that. Okay, the exterior angle exists right there. Now, it's not the same measure as the interior angle. There are exceptions, such as squares, uh, 90 degrees each. But the exterior angle plus the interior angle is 180 degrees, right? They're supplementary. So that's an exterior angle. That's not the only one. Extend all sides. There, there, there. I don't want to keep saying there, but... Okay. Exterior and interior angles, they have the same, you know, there's the same number of them. So there's six exterior angles in a hexagon, just like there are six interior angles. Okay. Um, the sum of all exterior angles of any polygon is always 360 degrees. So if I take each exterior angle, in fact, I'll give you an actual example here with regular uh, hexagon. If the interior angle is 120, 
the exterior angle has to be 60 because they're supplementary. 180 minus 120 is 60. So these are all 60. In a regular hexagon, they're all the same. So they're all 60. Now 60 times 6 is 360. That's just but one example. Think about a square. A square has 90 degree exterior angles. 90 times 4 is also 360. They all add up to 360. And if you notice, the exterior angles in smaller shapes, like triangle, square, pentagon, are bigger than the exterior angles in larger sh or, uh, shapes with more angles, like a dodecagon. Okay, so they get smaller, but there are more of them. That's how they balance themselves out, and they still add up to 360. Uh, central angles. I want to mention those next for a few reasons, because uh, they're a lot like exterior angles in terms of their angle measure. Um, central angles only exist in regular polygons. I'm going to put that first, because I don't think that that's said enough, by, even by me. Only exist in regular polygons. Because central angles come from a center. You don't have a center in an irregular polygon. They, only have, they can only be in regular polygons. Uh, not only that, um, but they are created from radii. Uh, they're created by radii. Radii are from center to vertex. Okay. Um, I want to make sure you get what a radius is. You know about a radius in a circle. I want to make sure you get what a radius is in a polygon. In a regular polygon, there exists a center. And that center point basically says that there are a certain number of lengths that are the same fixed distance away from the vertexes. Okay? Radii in a regular polygon are drawn from center to vertex. This is a radius. This is a radius. And all radii, like in a circle, are congruent. The only thing is in a circle, you have an infinite number of radii. You can draw them wherever. But you'll notice if I draw a length from here to here, this is shorter than the length from there to there. It's the furthest length I can draw out. So those are called my radii. Okay. Um, I should really put, it's the angle made. I, I mean, see I, see, I redo myself all the time. Angle made. from radii, I guess. So uh, for instance, I have central angles here, 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 and here. There are six of them if I, make, if I extend all my radii out. OK, these are also congruent uh, in a regular polygon where central angles exist. Now. Just like a circle, central angles add up to 360 degrees. If they add up to 360, I divide by the number of central angles I have, 6, and I get the measure of each. They are each 60 degrees. Now, you'll notice the central angles and the exterior angles have the same angle measure. And you might ask yourself, is that always true? Because the thing is, I mean, really, these are also 60 here and here. So it's like, maybe it only exists in regular hexagons, but I go to a regular octagon, maybe it's going to be different. No, actually, in a regular polygon, central angles and exterior angles have the exact same angle measure. Delete this remote exterior angle stuff. I, I wasn't talking about the right thing I wanted to. Um, but yeah, they all have the same angle measure. If your central angle is 60, your exterior angle is 60, for the same reason. They all add up to 360, and there are the same number of them. There are six exterior angles in a hexagon, like there are six central angles in there. So you'll always get the same angle measure for it. Okay. So that's some good stuff to know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that stuff so I can talk about the area right now. And I, wanna, I do want to try and go quickly about area. But it's one of the harder parts to understand. The area of any regular polygon. Shoot, the area of any polygon can be found by adding up common shapes that you know. In a regular polygon, I can do just as I did before. I can create um, isosceles triangles. You might not have known that these were isosceles, but if you remember that they're radii, radii are congruent. I have congruent sides here and here. So I do have isosceles 
triangles. And I have six of them. And they are congruent to one another. So if I find the area of one of these triangles, I can multiply by the number of triangles in my shape. And then I would get my area. So that's good news. Um, so that's really one way that you can look at this problem. Um, it's not, it's, the area of the hexagon is not just base times height. It's, it's nothing that simple. But I can, again, I can look into just one triangle, and I will. I want to find the area of this one triangle, and then I want to multiply it by the number of triangles. So it would help if you have certain lengths. Normally, maybe they'll give you this length right here, which is very nice. You can call it B, because we're talking about this triangle right here. And in the area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. That's not the area of my entire thing. But I need to find this height. This is where stuff gets difficult. This height. It doesn't matter if you look at it like triangles, if you look at it like the entire thing. This is the hard part to find. It's hard to find because you have to find a lot of other things with it. Maybe they tell you, in a regular hexagon, the length of one side is six. You know what? I'm not going to use six. I'm going to use uh, four. I'm not using six because because uh, everything here is six. It's six-sided shape. There's six triangles, whatever. Length of this side is four. Then they say, find the area. And then you're like, how the heck am I supposed to find this H? Well, here's what you're going to do. Um, this altitude in an isosceles triangle, mind you, divides, it, it, it bisects this segment right here. It bisects this segment and it bisects this angle. So it, so it helps you know, if I'm going to find H, maybe I've got to use Pythagorean theorem. Just look at one triangle at a time. I just want to look at this blue triangle right here. This blue triangle, I know, has a leg length of 2 because that's half of 4. Um, now, it's still not enough. I'm still missing something. And what I'm missing is Pythagorean theorem. If I had this length, that could help me. Um, but in this case, it might be difficult to find. In a hexagon, it's possible, but I'm going to avoid that. It would be best if you could find an angle measure like this one or like this one. Now, this one's a lot easier to find to me. If I just find the central angle which we knew was 60. The entire measure of this guy was 60. We got to find half of it. Just this little guy right in here. So half of 60 is 30. So now I'm looking at uh, a right triangle where I have an angle right here that's 30. You know that's 60. It's a 30, 60, 90 special triangle. I know this length is 2. I can find H in many ways now. I can use special right triangles. I can do anything, you know, I can do anything else like that. So the important thing here is that you need to find the area of this guy by finding this height right here. You find this height by using some trig, and I'm going to save you on the trig because we practiced that before. But um, you use trig, and you would get that height is 2 root 3 or some number. Uh, so you find the area of the base. The thing that I want to caution you about is that when you do that right there, that you don't use 2 as your base. Remember, your base wasn't 2. Your base of this triangle is 4. So your area would be half base times height for just that one triangle and then you get 4 root 3 as your area of this one triangle right here. So you take that area and then you multiply by the number of triangles that you have here. Okay, the number of triangles you have is 6, but that's also the number of sides and that's what I want to equate this to. It's not just number of triangles, it's also n your number of sides. So the area of the entire thing can be found by one half, or found by the area of one triangle times the number of sides. That's one half base times height times n. Now that height is the height of your triangle. Keep that in mind. Okay, that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it, um, it's the exact same thing. It's just that I want you to look at this equation differently. Um, Remember what base was. Base was just this guy right here. And remember what n is. n is the number of sides. What happens if I multiply your base by the number of sides? What is that length that you get? This plus that plus that plus that plus that plus that. The answer is you get your perimeter. So your base, and I'm just going to take this and rewrite this, base times n B times n is the perimeter 
of your entire polygon. Now your height, remember your height was the height of the triangle. That's not the height of the entire thing. Uh, that height was just this guy right here. In a polygon from center to perpendicular line drawn down here, they have a Greek word for it. It starts with an A. It's called the apothem. So your height of your triangle is also the apothem of your polygon. So if you want to find the area of your polygon, it is also known as one half apothem times perimeter. Now it's no different. You do the exact same thing. You have to find this. You have to find this length. You have to do the exact same thing. There's no difference, but the way you visually look at it is your call. That's how this thing exists. I want to make sure that you just have some idea of, okay, I'm seeing where you're coming from here, Mr. Robinson. Uh, you're making sense to me. So that's all the note stuff. Now time to go into practice. And like I said, this practice stuff might take a while. I haven't even done these problems yet, so I haven't even gotten the good timing of it. But let's practice some using all the information we've learned. Well, well that doesn't help. Okay, um, and by the way, when we do these things, I want you to practice not looking at tables. I want you to try and do the problems again as you do it. Uh, the sum of the measure of the interior angles of a tangon, that's a decagon, is 1,800 degrees. Okay, I want you to remember what the interior angle sum is by. You take the number of triangles of your shape. So if I have a 10-sided shape, that will be eight triangles. Okay, you can think about it that way or write down your formula like this, you will still get 180 times 10 minus 2, which is 180 times 8. 180 times 8 is 1440. 1440 is not 1800. This is false. Okay, part B, a circle with a 10-inch radius. And you know what? We didn't... Um, I didn't really talk about circles here, so uh, I will keep in mind for you if, if it comes up. Um, a circle's perimeter is its circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r. We're going to probably run into an area one then, in which case I'll put pi r squared. So a circle has a 10-inch radius. It's like, hello, this is 10 inches. Uh, a square has a side of 15 inches. For some reason, the 15, no, that 15 looks bigger. That's a square. Now everything's 15 there. We want to know which one is a bigger perimeter. Now this guy's perimeter is its circumference. So remember, circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. 2 times r is 2 times 10 is 20. So that's 20 pi. 20 times pi, um, oh, here, let's, let's use the calculator. 20 times pi. 62.8 uh, inches. So your circle circumference is 62.8. The perimeter of the square is 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15. That's 60. Does the circle have a larger perimeter than the square? Yes, it does. So this statement is true. 62.8 is greater than 60. Okay, if the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 24 degrees, then the polygon has 15 sides. So this is stuff that I didn't really, you know, I didn't talk about really here. Um, I went from one way to the other. Again, if you want to save time on this thing, you're going to have to go with me a little bit. <laughs> but I did tell you that the sum of each, the sum of your exterior angles is 360. If I want to find the measure of each one, I divide it by the number of uh, sides or angles, exterior angles. So... It goes the opposite way, too. Uh, sum of exterior angles is 360. If I want to find how many exterior angles there are, I want to divide it by the measure of one exterior angle. 360 over 24, use your calculator there, and you'll get 360 divided by 24 is 15. So you get 15 out of this. So there are 15 sides. And if that didn't make sense again, I want you to keep the big thing in mind here, and it's about regular polygons. Regular polygon is 24. That means that each exterior angle here is 24 degrees. None of them will, dis will uh, deviate from that because it's a regular polygon. All of them are congruent. 
all congruent sides and angles, right? So this is true. Polygon does have 15 sides. Okay, multiple choice. Uh, how many sides does a polygon have if the sum of the measure of its interior angles is 360 de 3,600 degrees? I'm going to do the work first, then work on it based on that. Or you can guess and check, but I think it's better to just solve for one and then circle it. Uh, using this equation again, you have to make sure that you know what you're looking for. You have the interior angle sum. So we have D, that's 3600. We have to find out N minus, or we have to find out N. So the rest is kind of algebra. Divide both sides by 180. 3600 divided by 180 is 20. So 20 equals N minus 2. And before I even solve for this thing, I want you to keep in mind what we're looking at here. 20 equals n minus 2. n is the number of sides, n minus 2 is the number of triangles. So I have 20 triangles in my polygon that's 3600 30, uh, 3, degrees of an interior angle sum. Add 2 to it, n equals 22. I have a 22 sided polygon and it has 20 triangles. I just want to make sure that you can break that down, you know what you're looking at as you do these problems. Because it's not just enough to spit out a formula. Maybe you want to say, well, I want to see how many triangles I have first. So divide 3600 by 180. And that's how many triangles you have, add two, etc. Without remembering the formula. Okay, a circle has a 12 centimeter diameter. Oh, what is its area? Well, there you go. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Probably something I should have had there. I have a circle. Its diameter, well, apparently doesn't go through the center these days. Its diameter goes through the center. Uh, the diameter is 12. Now, pi r squared means I need the radius. The radius is half the diameter, so 12 over 2 is 6. So to find my area here, it's going to be pi times uh, 6 squared. 6 squared is 36, so my area is 36 pi. You could use the calculator and approximate that, but look, this is multiple choice. You want to find the one that matches with it. That's going to be b. Okay, moving on. Read the following conditional statement. If a polygon has 12 sides, then the sum of its exterior angles is 360 degrees. What's funny about this is you don't want to think about this one too much. This is trying to trick you. It's trying to say, oh, 12 sides, is that different from six sides or from nine sides? The answer is sum of exterior angles is always 360 degrees. You don't want to uh, get too far away from that true reason the sum of all exterior angles in any polygon is 360 degrees. Always, 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 and guess what? Always. <laughs> okay, write the converse of the conditional statement. This is kind of why they have this thing here. Here's the converse, and we talked about converse in the Unit 7 review. Um, you basically, you take the if and the then you leave them there, and then you change almost everything else about it. But I'm going to keep the if a polygon. If a polygon, here's the condition. If the polygon's sum of its exterior angles is 360 degrees, then it has 12 sides. So the question is, is it true the other way around? If I'm looking at a polygon whose sum of its exterior angles is 360 degrees, I should have put 360, degrees, then it has 12 sides. Is that true or false? The answer is actually false. If you think about it, I mean, yes, it's true that a 12-sided polygon's exterior angles add up to 360. But just because they tell you that a uh, polygon's exterior angles add up to 360, then it absolutely has 12 sides? No, it could be anything. It could have a reason. It could have any number of sides. Right? You can have a 100-sided polygon. The exterior angles still add up to 360. So it, do, it can't just must be 12 sides. It can be anything. Okay. Number five. And uh, let's see. A regular 9-gon, I call it a non-gon, has a perimeter of 126 inches. So you already know P. I think it'll help you to use the formula that we talked about before. Area equals 1 half apothem times perimeter when we find the area of this thing. What's really nice about this problem, I think, is that it breaks it down into sections. It says, complete this chart, then explain this, and then this, and blah, 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 blah. You will often get a lot of problems 
unlike this one, where it'll just say this and then this. It will skip this stuff. And you'll look at it and you'll say, well, this problem must have a lot of steps and I don't know how to do the steps. They kind of lay out the steps for you. It's very nice that they do this for you. Some of it is kind of, uh, you don't really need all of it. Some of it really helps you though. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, number of sides of the polygon. Well, it's a nine-sided polygon. Some of the measures of the interior angles. Remember, it is number, and, and I'm, I'm not going to do the formula for this time. I don't want you to think, remember the formula. I want you to think that I multiply 180 by the number of triangles in this polygon. If you don't know, you can draw them out. This is something to help you out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. All triangles add up to 180 degrees. If I take 180 and multiply by seven, I will get my number. Okay, so it's not just D equals 180 times N minus 2. There's a concept behind it. So 180 times 7 is 1260. So the sum is 1260. The measure of each interior angle. Okay, well now it's getting a little different here. Now I want to erase all that stuff. That was just for that one problem. Each interior angle, remember this is a regular polygon. So each interior angle will be the same measure. There are nine of them. You take 1260 and divide it by 9, and you'll get your value. That value is 140 degrees. Okay. So all of these are 140. I'm just going to put this one. That one's 140, just like all the others. Some of the measures of the exterior angles. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this problem. One way to do this problem is extend out your exterior angle, create it, and because these are supplementary, excuse me, this would be 180 minus 140. So this would be 40 degrees. That's just one way of doing it. 180 minus 140 equals 40. The other way of doing it is saying, well, all exterior angles add up to 360. And there are nine of them. So to find the measure of one of them, I'll just do 360 over 9, which is also 40. I'm sorry, this asks for the measure of each exterior angle, so I'll put that right there. This asks for the sum of the measure. So this is 360 degrees. That's always 360. I think we have a table later where we're going to do that. Just fill that all out. So this is a practice that we're going to just practice again later. I might even skip that. Uh, we'll see. Let's see how much time I get on this. Clearly explain why the length of one side of the regular 9-gun must be 14 inches. And I'm just going to type it out for you. As I say it, the 9-gon, <laughs> the regular 9-gon, has 9 sides. Yes, we know that. <laughs> um, but it has 9 sides. The perimeter of the, I'm going to just type nonagon. The perimeter of the nonagon is 126 inches. Um, in a regular, in any regular polygon, the number, uh, I'm sorry, all sides are congruent. So if you divide the perimeter by the number of sides, you get the length of each side. In this case, it is 126 divided by 9, which equals, if you do your calculator, 14 inches. So basically what I did, the perimeter really is, it says, okay, it's this length plus this, plus this, plus this, etc. Add them all up, you get 126. And then you say, well, what is the length of each of them? Each of them is kind of that x, right? They're all the same thing. So 9x equals 126. Divided by 9, x equals 14. So each of these are 14. That's really going to help you for this problem. How so? Well, let's do it right here. In fact, I want to zoom in. This is, this is, I'm having trouble with this one. I need to make sure I get a lot of, 
lot of material to work with. Okay, finally, find the area of the regular nine gone show all work round your answer to two decimal places. Remember, this whole thing is based off one pretense. I have a lot of good information here. Area is one half apthem times perimeter. I have the perimeter. That's 126 inches. I need the apothem. I get the apothem. I'm, I'm good, right? A regular polygon has a center right here. My apothem is this guy right here. It's like the height of that triangle that we were looking at before. And in order to use that triangle, we need to draw this radius right here as well. So what we also know, what we just found out, was this was 14 inches across right here. If this whole thing is 14, this divides this length in half. So this right here is 7. This length is 7. I need to find this length right here. I don't know anything else. Remember what we need to do here. We need to look at central angles. And central angles are made from the um, radii. The radii are drawn, boom, right there, and boom, right there. So this one central angle, instead of doing the math, remember what I told you before. And, you know, and the reason why I say all this remember stuff is not so you necessarily do it on a test, but so you realize that all these things relate. I don't want to do this just one way. This each central angle is the same as the measure of each exterior angle. So the central angle is 40. I don't even have to do 360 over 9, but that is the math. Now I need to find half that central angle to get this angle right here. 360 over 40, uh, 360 over 40, 40 over 2 is 20. So this is 20 degrees right there. Now, in this case, we have to use trigonometry. Okay. Before I do, I want to give you one more way to do this problem. The measure of each interior angle was 140 degrees. So this whole thing right here was 140. Not that it's very obviously seen or known, but this radius bisects this angle into two. So this is 140 over 2, which is 70. And that makes sense because this is 20. This is a 20, 70, 90 triangle. These should add up to 90. So that makes sense anyway. <clears throat> okay, moving on here. I have 20 degrees right here. This length is 7. This is A. So this is trig right here, and it's a tangent function. In SOHCAHTOA, I have the opposite and adjacent sides to 20, and I do to 70 as well. I'm going to use TOA and take the tangent of 20 degrees for you. Tangent of 20 equals opposite over adjacent. Shoot, gee, I probably should have done it the other way. Um, I'll save you the math. I'll get you that A equals 7 over tangent of 20 degrees. Okay. Now that's an exact value. If you want to get an approximated value, I'll give it to you. But when I do the math in the calculator um, for the actual thing in the end, I want to use 7 over tangent of 20. Okay, uh, this number is about 19 0.23 uh, inches. Okay. Now, like I said, that number is good to just keep in focus and say, to, like, do I have the right number? Right. If you, if you have a number like the other one I said, said those like 0.3 something, that that obviously doesn't really work out here. This number should be bigger than seven because it's opposite the 70 side. So it's good to still look at that sometimes. But I'm going to use this number here. So the area, which is one half, apothem. times perimeter, that equals uh, 126 divided by 2. That equals about 1,211.64 square inches. That's huge. That's a huge nonagon, my friend. The other way to think about the problem, again, the same thing. Once you find that A, that is like the height of your triangle. You could have done one half base times height, one half 14 times that number, then multiply by nine. It gives you the same number. It's just the concept. People perceive things differently. I want to make sure you have access to both different views. Uh, you want to be unique with it. Okay, moving on forward, I believe and hope, hope it's the last page for everyone's sake. Solve for x in the following equations show all work. Okay. This one's kind of interesting. You need to have a general understanding of what you're looking at here. Um, I have this angle and this angle as 90 degrees. If I get this, I'm going to call this Y. 
if I get this y right here by using trig, because this is a right triangle, then I can get this. Now, 71 degrees is right here. This y is opposite that. So I'm going to do the sine. So opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 71 equals y over 10. So y equals 10 times the sine of 71 degrees. Now, like I said, I'm going to give you the approximate value, but when I do this, all in the end, I want to keep 10 times the sine of 71 because I need to get an exact number if I can. Especially, you know what, if you have a multiple, cho if you have multiple choice final, you don't want to screw that up. So that's about 9.46 millimeters. Um, and that makes sense, it should be less than 10. So this is about 9.46. Here's x. Now, it says they don't know what these angles are. Well, if these are congruent, then these are congruent right here. So this also must be 71 degrees. So if I have this y here and I, I need to get x, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. I can take the cosine of 71 degrees. That'll be equal to x over y. So x will equal y times the cosine of 71 degrees. Now y is 10 times the sine of 71. So times the cos cosine of 71. Okay. And that equals times 71 sine times 71 cosine equals 3 point zero eight about three point seven eight millimeters very nicely done okay one thing I wanted you to avoid doing was thinking that these triangles were congruent this is the hypotenuse uh, this is the hypotenuse for this triangle this is the leg for this triangle they're not congruent in fact if I drew another one you'll see what happens if I kept doing that these would grow, well, that's not really a right angle. But these would start growing mucho bigger. They start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, they, they just don't get smaller. So I didn't want you to think you can just take the cosine of 71 and this is also x. They're not the same thing. You have to work at it. It's a two-step process, really. So x is 3.08 in that problem. Uh, in this problem here, you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5-sided shape. That is a pentagon. Now, a pentagon has three triangles. <laughs> 1, 2, 3. 180 plus 180 plus 180 is 540. So the interior angle sum of a pentagon. It doesn't have to be a regular pentagon, by the way. But the interior angle sum equals 540 degrees. What that means is the sum of these angles is 540. So if you add these up, you'll get 540. So let's go ahead and add those up. 2x plus 90, that's this right here, plus 100, plus 2x again, plus 148, equals 540. Let's keep the x's on one side, that's 4x. 90 plus, so 190 plus 148, that is 338 subtract 338 from 540. I don't want to be wrong, so I need to calculate it. I think it's 202. Okay, 202. 4x equals 202. So x equals 50.5 degrees, I guess, because those labels have, leave out degrees. It should be millimeters then. Let's box that. So there you got a couple answers there. You know what? You could double check your work there. Um, if that was true, 2 times 50.5 is 101. So these would both be 101. 101 plus 101, that is 202. Plus 148, that is uh, 202. 350 plus, wait, is that, wait, is that right? 101, yeah. Uh, plus 100, that's 450. Plus 90, that's 540. So yes, that does work. Okay, two more problems. And like I said, you know, this is all that overbearance. Uh, I, I might do one or a couple of the problems just to kind of get you started. Okay, a circle is inscribed in a square. Find the area of the shaded region around your answer to two decimal places. So we need to find the area of this. Basically what you're going to do, area of the gray 
is really the area of the square minus the area of the circle, right? You take the square and you take out the circle and all that's left is this gray area right here. Like literally gray area. Um, this side length is 24. This is a square, so all of these are 24. Not that it's going to matter in terms of perimeter. You don't really need that. But what you would like to know is that if this is the center right here, this 24 is the whole thing. We need to get the radius of the circle because we need to find the area of it. Area of circles pi r squared. The radius will be half the length of one side, so this area is 12. Or, I'm sorry, the area. This radius is 12 inches. Oh, centimeters. Okay, so we have the information that we need to work on this. The area of the square is 24 squared, which I believe, is that 476? Um, 24. No, I think it's 576, isn't it? 576. 576 uh, square centimeters. The area of the circle is pi times r. r is 12. Squared is 144 pi. Right now I'm going to keep it as 144 pi. I'm going to do the subtraction. So the area of the gray of the shaded region is the area of the square, 576, minus 144 pi. Now they ask us to leave it uh, around its two decimal places. Now that's where I got to do this, 576 minus, oops, 576 minus 144 times pi. I don't, there's the pi button. That is 100, about 123 point six one. Uh, square centimeters. So the area of the whole thing is 576. The area of this part's uh, between, it's about a, a quarter of it, it's about a fifth of it, quarter of it, something like that, right? So that's the area of that whole shaded region there. Cool. Okay, complete the table below, show all calculations neatly in each table. I want to rummage through this one quickly. First of all, some of the measures of each exterior angles, you got to automatically put 360, and this will help you find all of them. I'm not even going to show you alternative ways to find them. I'm just going to find them for you. Uh, number one, number of sides of polygon is 24. If that's 24, you can automatically find the measure of each exterior angle here by 360 over 24. That gives you... I don't like this calculator. I have to push the buttons hard. 15. So this is 15 degrees for each interior angle. If each exterior angle, if each exterior angle is 15, the interior angle would be 180 minus 15. Remember, these are all regular polygons. Regular, regular, regular equals 165. If each interior angle is 165 degrees, the sum of the measures of the interior angles is 165 times 24. Take how many interior angles there are, multiply by 24. Oops. 165 times 24. And it's 36, 3960 degrees. So that's one way of doing like that problem. Okay, let's do another problem. Now I have the... Um, interior angle sum, okay, I can find the number of sides this way. Remember, the number of sides is, if I take 50, 40, well, here, I'll show you the formula. It's that. We have that. But I take 50, 40, divide by 180, then I get the number of triangles in my thing. So 50, 40 in my polygon. 50, 40 divided by 180 is 28. 28 plus 2 will give you the number of sides, which is 30. So 30 sides in this polygon. Um, hmm, what do I want to say? I've seen people give answers, negative answers. I've seen people give decimal answers. You can't have a decimal number of sides. You can't have a negative number of sides. And you can't have number of sides that's 1, 2, or 0. It has to be 3 or more, and it has to be an integer. So make sure that you know if you have a decimal, you did something wrong in the number of sides department. These can be different. Um, and I'll show you a different way to do this one instead of the way we just did it last time. If we have 30 sides in our polygon, 50, 40, our interior angle sum divided by 30 will give, 
you the measure of each interior angle, and that's 168 degrees right there. We'll go backwards this way now. Instead of dividing 360 by 30 to get the exterior angle measure, I'm going to do 180 minus 168 because they're supplementary, and that gives you 12 degrees for the measure of each exterior angle. So that helps you there. Okay, last two, and we are wrapping it up. Each interior angle is 171. So the exterior angle is 180 minus 171. That's 9. Exterior angle is 9 degrees. This must have a lot of sides. How many? Well, if you take 360 divided by 9, you'll get that exact answer. 360 over 9 equals 40. This is a 40-sided polygon. That is a very circular-looking polygon. Be sure 40 sides is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? The angles aren't that, the interior angles aren't that easily seen. Now, a 40-sided polygon has 38 triangles. Can you dig that or what? 38 triangles times 180 will give you your interior angle sum, right? It's not just a formula. It's an idea. That's 6840. That's huge. Why am I getting more excited about this as I'm winding down? I think I'm just getting excited. We're winding down. This is a lot to say. And finally, the very last one. Uh, let's go from exterior to interior. I like doing that. Well, well no, no. Let's go from exterior to uh, this again. 360 over 20 will give you the number of sides. Is, what, is that 18? 18 sides. 18 sides is 16 triangles, 16 times 180 equals 2880. And this one, just because I feel like I have a little bit of time, I'll do 2880 over 18, and that will be the same thing as 180 minus 20. Right? I'm trying to get the interior angle here. That'll be the same as supplementary exterior angle or divide by the number of sides with the interior angle sum. 2880 divided by 18. Should it give you 160? I press equals. It gives me 160. Interior angle sum, or interior ang each interior angle is 160 degrees. I am good. Or not, not like I am awesome, I am good. But like I am okay with what we've done here. Uh, we are done here, aren't we? Yes. I'm not saying yes, like I'm relieved, but this is a lot for you, okay? You have a lot to learn there, and it's a lot to take in. So I, you know, I want to try to get in under an hour. We'll check the timing on that. I think I was very close. So uh, thank you. And again, you know, I mean, I mean, I really should thank you guys for watching these things if you do. Thank you, especially if you stayed toward the end here. I very much appreciate that. You guys are awesome. If you do have any questions, please ask. As, as needed here. And I know that there were a lot of things that I didn't cover, you know, like the circle stuff, I didn't. But I'm saving that for the circle unit, unit uh, 10. Okay, uh, enjoy.